It's me, the Undead Viking, Lance Mikestra. I'm here to talk to you about a game that actually is about Vikings. So I'm actually pretty excited to tell you about this. Uh, this is what I would consider a super filler type game. Uh, but it has a lot of cool, interesting decisions and a lot of take that and uh, like ability to affect other people and, and, and alter their plans and all those kind of things that like I really enjoy about games where you can start having a main idea and, and a main... Uh, uh, strategy, uh, but because of the way people are messing with what you're doing, uh, it, you have to alter that strategy and, and, and be malleable with what you're trying to do, and also, like, both be trying to better yourself, uh, while also uh, recognizing when other people are getting close uh, to winning the game and having to step in and alter what they do. So, uh, the game is called uh, Norse Saga, in, like, just like, Norse Saga, so, and the game is about um, you telling this story, telling a saga about your family and, 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 uh, telling this like, uh, uh, like story about, uh, like depending on what saga card you draw and like there's, there's hero cards that look like this and there are saga cards that look like this. And at the beginning of the game, you get a saga card and it tells you what story, what saga you're trying to tell. And then you're going to tell that through the different generations of your family and the, the accomplishments that they have. And uh, it's a lot of color coding and things like that, but um, it does kind of uh, have like kind of a fun little story because each one of these little hero cards um, like has like a little story about them and they're unique and, and they're pretty interesting. And uh, and basically whoever can finish their saga first uh, will win the game. So let me show you how to play the game like I always do, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you more about Norse Saga. This is the game of Norse Saga, and I'm going to show you how to play here in just a second. Um, this, obviously, is two different decks of cards. There are uh, Saga cards and Hero cards, and uh, these are the tokens that I was given that allow you to uh, show which one of your family traits, your family saga, uh, you've completed. Now, I'm going to show you how to build your family tree and how that whole process works here in just a second. But um, just quickly, when the game begins, like, there's all these Saga cards, and so I'm just going to show you. Like, really nice thing about this this game is I mean this artwork is awesome as I said I'm, I'm a big uh, I'm a lot I'm a Norwegian and I and I'm big into the whole Norse mythos thing and so these are very representative of, of the whole Norse mythos and and different things uh, that are part of that uh, that very rich and uh, uh, storytelling world if you will but um each one of these is like a saga that you're trying to say that your family uh, uh, is telling. And so like, you know, here, we'll just take Skull here. And uh, so this is, um, and these are the, the things you're gonna have to satisfy. You're gonna need one green, uh, two red, and three blue. Or as they say, craft, lots of might, here, let me make sure you can see that. Lots of might and tons of lore. Or, you know, here's uh, the Norwife, you know, goddess of wisdom. And so you have uh, craft, Lots of might and tons of faith. And so in some of them, let me find one here, like it's just even, you know, two, two, and two. And then even more, some of them are going to be like this, where they're, you know, three and three, like that. But anyway, you get a ton of these, and so you're going to deal one of these to each player, and then you're, they're going to turn that face up, and the rest of them aren't going to be used for that particular round of the game. And that's what your goal is going to be. And then you're going to get four of these cards, these hero cards, and so like here we have a guy, you know, half Dan, and then even half Dan, half blind, uh, those who took his eye did not live to regret it. And so the big thing you have to worry about is th these things right here, the, over, over here, here, and here. This is the dominant gene, like, because you are like building a family tree. And so that's the dominant gene right there, and these are the recessive genes. And so you, this guy's all red, as you can see. Now let me just grab like a stack here, and so you can kind of see. So now, here we have um, Iona the Wisest, and the, each one has a little thing here. Uh, Iona gathers years as trees gather sunlight, growing greater. And so, she's recessive blue, but um, 
you know, yellow is the main, you know, the dominant. And so, and so you can tell that some of them, um, you know, like, you know, green and, you know, and so you can tell all the, all the colors are represented. Now, you, this one's a ghost, and I'll explain ghosts in a little bit. Obviously, you can see that um, they are black, and that's not going to help. And there's one other kind. I'm going to find him for you. Of course, I didn't grab enough of them to find a, a purple guy, which is a scald. Huh. There's another ghost for you. Um, but here, let me find a scald. Oh, here we go. So, uh, Snorri Secret Keeper. And so you can see that he his dominant is purple, meaning no, nobody's gonna have a purple as part of their scoring. And, but he has a recessive, so he can, you, you're eventually, you, you could possibly score the recessive gene or the recessive trait. And I'll explain that, how you do that, when I get to the actual uh, part of the rules. But here is Snorri, uh, king of stories. They travel long and endure much to be told by him. And so, you know, I really like the art in this game. It's pretty awesome. But I like the candles, uh, you know, burning on the back of his backpack. But, so, um, and, the, and the, the scalds, why would you play a scald if you can't, you have a dominant trait? Well, the scalds have special powers, and I'll explain that in just a second, when I actually show you how to play the game. So... With the uh, magic of video editing, I'm going to clear this off, and I'm going to start a family tree, and then you're going to be able to see uh, how that works. All right, I've been dealt uh, my 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 rune or my my saga that I have to uh, uh, do, and this would be uh, Natterhog, the gnawing dragon, a tale full of might, lots of faith, and tons of lore. So I need to get. One red, two yellow, and three blue. Now everybody else is going to be like trying to do their own thing as well and trying to prevent me from getting these. And these are open knowledge. You can't hide what you have or whatever. And so these are the first four cards that I've been dealt. Now, I actually got kind of lucky. I got two blue ones. And since I need three blue, that's kind of helpful. But here's the deal. You have to set up basically yourself, like the youngest person, like, and then you set two below that, your parents, and then then your parents, you know, grandparents on either side. And you have to be able to have like one of these, like whenever you place one down, you get you get to score it. So let's say for the very first turn, what I do is I just like I, I'm gonna play uh, who is this? Uh, Verthandi the Dreamer. And so I'm going to place that. And actually, you know, that probably isn't a really good choice uh, because of the fact that the yellow recessive is actually pretty helpful because maybe I can, because I need two yellow. So let's actually play um, Atli Stoneward. Atli Stoneward. So, because the recessive is, um, is red, which I need one of, but there are two that I need of, of the yellow. So let's just go ahead and we're going to put that one down. And so as soon as I place that, on your turn, what you do is you first draw up to four cards if you don't have four cards. And we, it's the first turn, so we have four. And then you would um, make an embellishment, which means, and I'll explain that in a second, um, any, any cards you placed, uh, beginning with the youngest hero and then moving down, you can do an embellishment if you so desire, as long as you qualify for it. And then uh, you can play a card. And you can play cards over cards, and if you play a card on top of a card, you dismiss it. But in this case, since I've gone ahead and placed that one, I can take... See, oh, I, I apologize. I should have put all of the Saga Stones uh, that I need to claim over here. And I guess, like, in, when the game is published, these won't be uh, these little gems. They'll be, like, cardboard tokens or, or, or wooden tokens. I, I'm not sure which, but they won't be those Saga Stones. And so I can take one of these off, just like so, and I can place it on there. So now I can see that I only have five left to play. And then I'm gonna, then, then that would uh, win me the game if I can get all of those Saga Stones. And that happens as soon as somebody does that, they win the game. And so then it'll go around the table and everybody else will do their thing. And then I will draw another card and see what I got here. So, um, well, that doesn't really help me. Uh, well, it's a red one, and I do need one red one. And, you know, I can maybe uh, play a one later on that would, like, match up, right? So, what we can do here, actually, that might be really helpful. Um, so, on my turn, uh, well, the first thing I do is I draw up to four, which I did. And now I can use an embellishment. And the embellishment is whatever the youngest hero is, um, that's the color of embellishments you can do. You, you can't do any other color other than that one. And so each color has a certain number of abilities and certain traits or things that they do. And in this case, um, with the blue, uh, 
and each one is different. I mean, and they, they gain in power the, the further down the generations they get. So this is a uh, lore, as I said, blue. And so the first one is um, you, uh, you, you, with to embellish, you draw a card uh, and then discard a card. And you don't have to discard a card you drew, but you do have to discard before you do anything else your turn. So that's a pretty good power. You, know, you get to draw it. If I can manage to get another blue person, like in my second generation, one of my parents, the uh, would become Offering. You discard a card, and if you do, you may play a card of the same color uh, as the discarded card. And so you know you can uh, um, you can a hero's color is uh, their dominant trait, skulls and ghosts. Well, I should. I'm getting a little far, but Skulls and Ghosts. But then the third one is Possession. When you pick a hero from another player's family tree and swap it with one of yours. So you can actually, like, steal somebody. If you can get one of your grandparents with blue, then you can do that third power. And you can see that those things gain in power as you go along. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to draw a card. And, whoa, I get a blue and blue. So this is actually really good because, um, you know, I need blue. So that's pretty good. And I pretty sure I have like this green guy here. I don't need green at all. So let's just get rid of him. We're going to discard that one. So that's a pretty good, pretty good turnaround for me. And so then on, and then I get to play a card. And so as I said, we have, we need one red, right? And like we could play uh, little Ursa and they, she's red and she's got this blue uh, section over there. So we can go like this. And now I should mention that you don't have to have male and female. You can just pick two people. And those are your parents, if you will. And so then I can immediately then take this red one and place it down like that. And so and then it goes around the table again. And I'm going to draw my card. And so now, you know, I get this is a pretty good one, you know, because it is blue and, and yellow. I'm getting really good card draws here. And so if I want to, I can do my embellish. Remember, I can't do the second level embellish because of the fact that this is a red. But on my turn, I'm not going to draw one. So I can then, if I wanted to, uh, look in here. What I can do is I can go ahead and place this here like that. Now, I can't place my gem, my, my, my saga gem here because of the fact that you can only use one of the two dominant ones. But I can take, because I've matched up these two blue ones, I can take it and I can go like so. And so now I've gotten rid of that one. So you can see, like, there is that little stipulation, but I've managed to, you know, increase my, uh, my, my, my uh, grouping there. I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit. So maybe we can do the next level so I can get my grandparents in. So then we go around again. And then I draw my card, and well, here's another red, but I don't need red. That's not a really good draw. And so, well, now I'm going to do the draw, see if I can get a better one. <laughs> All red, that's no good, so we're going to get rid of him. And no, I could have done my second level embellishment, but I didn't because I wasn't thinking. So now and then I get to play another one. And so now, at the same time, though, other people are going to be trying to increase their power and increase their ability, and they're going to get to the point where, you know, they might actually be able to start messing with my tree as well. But here I could play... Um, this another blue so i can place another blue down there and now other players might be seeing me as a threat because of the fact that you know i've gotten all my blue now all i gotta do is get my yellow if i got yellow cards in here then i'm gonna be winning and so then my next turn comes over i get another blue one probably not it's not gonna help me as much but see now as long as and you don't have to fill out your entire tree uh to win if you do you do if you don't you don't no big deal so i need to get rid of two yellows so i can place that one and then that they share the yellow, so I can place that. And then if it gets all the way back around to me, hopefully I can draw a yellow. I don't, but I do draw a Scald, and that's actually, I'm gonna tell you what the Scalds do. So the cool thing about a Scald is, you do an embellishment before you play a card. But, when you play a Scald, as one of your cards, you can immediately use another embellishment that you have access to. And in this case, you know, I have level three blue, so now, I might have a situation here where another player might have, let me just say, like, I can probably win the game because of the fact that I can do the possession here. Let me just say, let's say, ugh, there we go. Let's say one of my opponents um, had uh, Asa Green Leech, but notice how it's a yellow there. So the, the third level of blue is possession. You pick a hero from another player's family tree and swap it with one from yours. So I immediately get to use an embellishment when I play... Uh, I play a Scald, and if I needed a red, he does have a recessive for red. So I can go ahead, all right, you know what? I'm gonna trade you 
with the Scald. Here you go. You can have that guy. And then, bam, I would immediately win because of the fact that I have completed my saga. I've, I've told my story about my family. And, uh, and I've impressed uh, the other people of my tribe, if you will. And I've told the story of uh, Natterhog, uh, the Gnawing Dragon. Now, obviously, I probably wouldn't have gotten uh, that far, uh, and, and, and the other players probably would have uh, tried to prevent me uh, from winning by, by using their powers as well to disrupt it. But that should give you a pretty good idea of how the game is won. Now, I need to find a ghost in here somewhere. Let me see here. Ah, oh, there we go. So here is Empty Ivar. An Empty Ivar is a ghost. And you notice he has no recessive, but he has a ghost. Now, the cool thing about ghosts are you can play them in your own family tree if you want. And remember, if you place one over one, you do, just, you do get rid of it. But you can place it in somebody else's family tree to disrupt their family tree and 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 take away uh the, one of their winnings basically so you if they if they have and that can actually really be damaging like in this situation like if you placed it here not only would you well i guess i should say like here not only would i lose my third blue that would go there but i'd also lose this yellow because of the fact that i wouldn't have the the recessive and then all of a sudden there would be this ghost sitting in my uh in my family tree and that's and ghosts have that power and they have the ability and they're very useful to have one in your hand if somebody's getting close to winning now you might be wondering why you would ever play a ghost uh, on your own family tree. Well, here's the deal. Their powers, their embellishments, are actually very, very powerful. And if you place them as your starter and put them at the top, like, one of the things that they, the first ability they have, their embellishment is that you can play a card from your hand. And you then get to play another card, your normal play a card as well. So you get to place two, two uh, cards in your family tree, which is a very powerful ability. Now, if you ever do use a ghost's embellishment ability, you have to take a doom token, which in this case is just a penny. But you place a doom token on, on your on on your uh, on your ghost, and then for the rest of the turn until your turn, anybody else can play a card into your family tree to disrupt it or do whatever they're going to do. And that's any ability. Anytime they could play a card that normally would be played into their own family tree, they can choose to place it in yours as well. And they can, you know, screw with you and disrupt you, disrupt what you're trying to attempt as well. But the Doom powers are actually really powerful. Like the second level, you can have two ghosts. The second generation is each player has to dis dismiss a hero from their family tree. And then it includes you. You have to dismiss one as well. But they have to just basically discard one of their heroes. You know, so that's actually really powerful. And if you have a third one, that's considered Ragnarok. And then everybody dismisses all of their third generation heroes. So these really powerful ones that give those third generation abilities, everybody in the, would have to discard those and get rid of them, which is obviously pretty powerful as well. So ghosts um, are a great way to block somebody and prevent them from winning but they're also an excellent way for you to have like these really powerful abilities that allow you to really mess with everybody else but as i said you do have to give yourself that doom token that allows that then takes away your ability or it gives everybody else the ability to play cards in your in your family tree during that time so um there's a lot of stuff that goes on when you play the game and it's a lot of fun uh, but that should give you a really good idea of how to play the game. As I said, as soon as you take all these tokens off of their saga, that's when you win the game. All right, and thanks a lot for uh, sitting through after that. that uh, the game uh, actually you know, is there's no like last turn. Or and I think like I that. As probably as showed that, that uh, while, while showing you um, uh, uh, the different steps and what you do. I mean, every turn you're doing the exact same thing. Drop to four, embellishment, play a card. And sometimes you won't do an embellishment. Sometimes you might even not might not even play a card because maybe it won't help you or what have you. But uh, you know, uh, but you know, those are the four, three different options that you have. Um, now, I didn't go through each and every little special ability that you have. I can just kind of read off a couple of here. Um, so, like, uh, you know, I mentioned I mentioned the lore cards because I was talking about them. But um, like might cards, uh, you can dismiss one of your heroes and place a new card in that spot, and you must place a new card in the same spot. Uh, from which to dismiss the hero. So in other words, like the embellishment for the first level, that's the first level. It might you, You're able to, you know, uh, play an extra card, if you will, but only if you dismiss, dismiss one. And then the second one is you discard two cards 
uh, you choose a player, and then they must uh, dismiss a hero from their family tree. So you get rid of two of your cards, and you tell somebody else, you got to get rid of somebody. And then, like, the third one, you play a card in another player's family tree. And then that's, like... The same thing as like kind of like the ghost being able to play or somebody's been doomed, but you don't have that. So you have that extra ability uh, to play that. Um, the craft or green, uh, first generation is you look at another player's hand. And so this is the kind of thing where you get, get extra extra information. And then you can swap a card from your hand to get one from theirs if you so desire. Uh, the second uh, generation is turncoat. You take back a hero from your family tree. Um, if you do, uh, you play a card, then discard any number of cards. And that's, so this is the kind of the, 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 the one that you can, um, kind of revive, like, if you don't have a bunch of cards you don't like, um, you can take one card back, you know, and then, uh, you, you, you know, then you play a card, so you put one back down, and it doesn't have to be where you took it, but, you know, there you go. And then, um, then you can discard, uh, like, any number of your cards. And I should mention that when you actually play cards, you don't have to play your youngest hero first. You can actually start at the bottom. But remember, you can't do any embellishments until you get that first, like, youngest one, that youngest hero out there first. Uh, because you have to build, and then you, they have to all be the same color. And so, like, if you have, like, you know, a second generation red and a third generation red, but no first generation red, then you can't do any embellishments with those red cards. And, and, and so... You have to keep that in mind. And then finally, the, the, the last one for green, um, Infiltrate, is you look at any player's hand, and then you may place each of their cards onto any existing hero of the same color. So you can go ahead and start really messing with people uh, with that one. And then uh, I, I talked to you about lore. Let me just find, yeah, Faith in yellow. Here, I'll quickly go through that. Um, you uh, First generation is you discard your, car, you discard your hands and you draw three cards. So another way to, you know, just start over. Uh, second generation is prayer. You play the top card of the hero deck. Uh, you don't get to see what the card is before you play it. You have to play the card. If your family tree is full, you have to play it on top of one of your existing heroes. If the card is a ghost, you can play it somewhere else. And if another player has a doom token, you may play the card in there. So another ability that you know you can mess with people. And then finally the martyr, third generation, is each player dismisses one of their heroes, draw that many cards, and place them where those heroes used to be. So um, each everybody dismisses one, and then you draw, and then you, like you can take your pick from that and give yourself a good one, and then give everybody else ones that isn't going to help. And so like all of those embellishments are actually really cool and really fun to, to play with. Um, and it, it's it's one of those things where it's like you you'll have situations where you'll like really wish that you had like you know the martyr uh, you know ability, but you don't have a third generation yellow. You'd be in a perfect situation to use that. Maybe you have a third generation blue. And you, during the game, you'll be actually kind of swapping out that first hero a lot of the time, you know, just be malleable and have those different abilities. And it's really nice is when you actually set up a couple of different avenues you have of like and so when you change that hero you can change it for the for what you need it at that moment you know and so like you can have so then you you play the card and then you can immediately you know, in the next one you can embellish or like if you have a situation where i've had and lots of times when I, I would play a scald that would actually perfectly um like chain with the like because they have that recessive that would that would fill fill the recessive for like a third generation or a second generation ability and then I immediately get to do an embellish and so then you can add that extra chaining ability and then drawing cards or playing cards and things like that. And that's what it is. This game is a lot of like cool little puzzle moments that like when you actually pull them off they make you feel like you're clever and I really like the fact that like I'm not just watching somebody else build their group I'm actually like playing cards in their tree, and like you know, and, and so the whole idea of the, the the theme of it, you're 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 making up the story of your saga, that you're all like in this whatever like meeting house, and everybody's like you know telling their story, and then the other people will start shouting you down, and no, 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 he's lying, you know, his he that wasn't the, the his second generation uh, grandfather, it was this guy, you know, and he didn't do what he's saying he did, and so it kind of actually really fills the theme fills the theme really well. I mean all. At its core, I mean, it's just a really, really clever card game. Um, and, and it's like set matching and, and variable player powers if you want to like get technical as far as the different actions and the different abilities that the game gives you. But um, it has a lot of, like I said, a lot of those moments where you actually feel kind of clever and feel kind of smart when you pull the things off. And also it's like... Um, I like the, the take that aspect. A lot of people might not like that. But in this game, it's, it, it's first and foremost. Because, of this, as I said earlier... 
you have to balance building up your own path to victory, but also keeping an eye on everybody else and making sure that you stop them from getting too powerful. And then, and you'll find you'll have to have like that little perfect little combination of two or three things have to happen perfectly, or you know, and as long as people aren't paying attention to you too much. But like to to snag you know the victory like when you because if you're really close, if you just need like one gem, everybody's gonna know you just need that one gem, and they're gonna do what they can do to stop it. But if you just need two but you can figure out a way to combo a couple things together and then get them both at the exact same time that's uh you know when you can kind of snag victory and, and surprise everybody and that's really satisfying when that happens all in all the game's just awesome i mean even if even if it wasn't about vikings which actually helps a lot for me i'd still really like the game um and uh if you're a person that enjoys like these little 30 minute uh card games and and uh and like like a puzzle aspect i think you're going to really enjoy in our saga so uh, if you have any questions about the game, I'd love to hear those. Go ahead and post those. I'll answer those to the best of my ability, as always. And as always, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, uh, this is me telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.